This is the future. Evolution. This is the future. Hello, my fellow Dream Chasers. Kenzie Retro, the original Dream Chaser here. Uh, now, I wasn't able to find uh, 10 moments on my YouTube channel. So I wasn't able to put together my top 10 channel moments of 2019. But my favorite, mo my favorite moment on the channel had to be when I hit 100 subscribers a few months ago. I'm at 115 at time of recording, so I'm gonna, so I'm, so we're gonna go straight into our next uh, top 10, and it is looking back on not just a year, but a decade, in not just films, but games as well. I'll be going through my top 10 movies of the. day. Decade. Oh man, where to even begin with this one? It was. It was a Herculean task for me to. Um, it was a Herculean task for me to. Uh, for me to put this films of the decade together. I mean, my games of the decade wasn't wasn't much easier. But nevertheless, nevertheless, this is what we have in store. I've literally, no joke guys, I've literally had to make a few changes to the list. I mean, oh man, I did not want to actually rank these and just talk about my favourite film from each year. You know what? I've done it anyway, regardless. It is, it is, it is something I did not want to do. I did not want to put, I did not want to rank worst to best, but I've done it anyway, regardless. So what I've done is I've picked my favorite film from each year of the 2010 decade, from 2010 through to 2019. Uh, you'll already know one of the films you already know one of the films from uh, you you already know one of my f one of the films that's going to be on here thanks to uh, my top 10 films of 2019 but nevertheless these also have to be films that i have seen at some point throughout the these, are, these have to be films I've seen at some point throughout the decade as well. So there is a bit of leniency here. As long as the film came out during the decade, then it's eligible for this list. So let's get started. Number 10 
and we are starting off with 2012 and what an action-packed year we had we had the first avengers film we had the amazing spider-man critically acclaimed classics like life of pi lincoln and argo you had the climax of the christopher nolan batman trilogy with the dark knight rises you had uh, disney Disney managed to hit it out of the park with films like Brave and Wreck-It Ralph. You had the start of the Hunger Games franchise. You had Jennifer Lawrence kicking it into high gear with an award with an Oscar-winning role in Silver Linings Playbook. We had the film adaptation of Les Miserables. I could go on all day, but my pick for 2012 film of the year was Skyfall, celebrating 50 years of James Bond. Daniel Craig's third outing as the 00 agent and the last appearance from Judy Dench as M. It was uh, it was an emotional roller coaster. We got to see the DB5 back in action and we also saw um Uh, what else did we have? We also had uh, the titular home of uh, Bond when he was younger. It's um, it's just it's just uh, a house in the Scottish Highlands called Skyfall. Right, number nine, and we are heading to 2016, and oh my goodness me, what another fantastic year this was. Uh, we had uh, we had Deadpool with his first uh, solo movie. This is how he should have been in uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine. I said about that, but better. Disney got political with Zootopia, or Zootropolis over here in the UK. They had uh, the Jungle Book remake, we had musical moments from La La Land, and we and Marvel hit it out of the park again with Captain America Civil War and Doctor Strange. DC also had uh, a couple of films out uh, in this year as well, with Batman vs Superman and Suicide Squad. We also had the start of a spin-off series in the Harry Potter universe, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Star Wars had a great bridge between episodes 3 and 4 with Rogue One, but my pick is Finding Dory. 13 years we had to wait for a se for a sequel to Finding Nemo. And it's just as emotional as the first film. Uh, Dory trying to find her parents, and it is just like I said, it's a, it's an emotional roller coaster, among other things. Number eight, twenty fourteen is our year of choice for this year, and what and. Just from this alone, we've already got some incredible films. We had Interstellar, we had Boyhood, we had X-Men Days of Future Past, we had uh, Michael Keaton in Birdman, we had Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and Marvel at it once again with Captain America, The Winter Soldier, and Guardians of the Galaxy. But my pick... The Lego Movie. How awesome is this film? It is up there as one of the best animated films of all time. It's just a shame that it just missed the cutoff for the Oscars. Uh, but it doesn't ch take away from the fact that it is, well, an awesome film. Emic Bukowski, Emic Bukowski fitting in with everybody and somehow ends up becoming a master builder in this film. I mean... How on earth do you, how on earth do you go from being your average everyday builder, just doing so well fitting in, nobody notices you, to becoming a master builder and saving the flipping world? <sighs> 
So here we go. It is number seven and it's 2019. Now, if you paid attention in my top 10 films of 2019, you'll already know what number one is. There were a lot of films that came out this year. Some good, some not so much, but I'm only going to be focusing on the good films. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the latest one from Quentin Tarantino. There's a, a you've got a Martin Scorsese directing The Irishman and for Netflix. You had films like Toy Story 4. You had uh, Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker. How did I manage to forget about that one in my top 10 films? But anyway, and uh, Disney were... Disney went overboard on the remakes. Dumbo, uh, very forgetful. Uh, you had a lot. Yeah, you had the Aladdin remake. You had the Lion King remake. Uh, Frozen Two from Disney. The uh, Frozen Two from Disney, and you also had the live. Uh, you also had Toy Story Four. Uh, biopics in the form of Rocket Man and Ford versus Ferrari. Then we get to Marvel. Captain Marvel, Spider-Man Far From Home, and my film of the year for 2019, Avengers Endgame. What an incredible payoff of 11 years of storytelling. I went into great detail in my spoiler-free review of Avengers Endgame the day after I went to see it. And yeah, it was just incredible to see. It was just incredible to see such a great payoff with so much marketing and it ended up becoming the highest grossing film of all time. Number six. And it is on to 2017. Now, there was there was a lot to like about 2017. We had Wonder Woman, Baby Driver, uh, Jordan Peele's directorial, directorial debut with Get Out, uh, World War II thriller in the form of Dunkirk, Oscar-winning Shape of Water, Marvel added again with Logan, Thor Ragnarok, and... Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. You had other hits like The Disaster Artist and War for the Planet of the Eight. Another... And, uh, and Disney were... And Disney made it... Uh, made a successful re uh, live-action remake with Beauty and the Beast. Uh, and then you had... The same, and then Marvel, Spider-Man, Homecoming, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2... Um, and at the time, my film of the year, Logan, because I had done, because I had done this list before my pick for 2017 film of the year, Coco as well, Paddington 2, uh, but my pick, but my pick for 2017 film of the year, The Greatest Showman, ladies and gentlemen. This was one of those films that spread like wildfire. As soon as I saw the first trailer for it, I was just like, yes, this is a film I want to go and see. Went to see it on release day, Boxing Day here in the UK. And uh, I ended up seeing it like two or three times. One of which was a sing-along screening. Uh, and yeah, it is just... A fantastic film. Hugh Jackman, P.T. Barnum, Zac Efron, Phil Carlyle. The soundtrack is on point. Uh, I've actually done covers of some of the songs from the soundtrack, which you can check in, uh, which you can check on my channel. I mean, what could be said about The Greatest Showman that hasn't already been said? The quote at the end of the film pretty much sums it up perfectly. The noblest art is that of making others happy. Number five, and we're into 2018. And sweet cheese and crumpets, we had a lot to love about 2018. A Star is Born, A Quiet Place, The Incredibles 2, 14 years since we had an Incredibles film. But still, the rules remain the same. No capes! 
Tom Cruise back at it again with Mission Impossible Fallout, Deadpool 2, and Marvel at it again with Ant-Man and the Wasp, Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, and uh, Disney were at it as well with... Um, Disney were at it with um, Mary Poppins Returns, Wreck-It Ralph 2, uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, uh, Steven Spielberg back on form with Ready Player One, uh, Marvel had Venom as well, but my pick, it's a huge leap of faith I took, but I managed to take, but I managed to succeed with Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. What an amazing Spider-Man film it is. This just goes to show, Sony can make good Spider-Man films, they just can't do it on command. <laughs> but I mean, the leap of faith scene in the film. I've lost count of how many times I have watched that scene. And it's still a great moment of emotional triumph. The score, the music, the song, the lyrics. Can't stop me now! Oh man, I want to watch that. Oh. And then my Favourite side character in the entire film. My favourite... My favourite side character in the entire film. S Peter Porker as Spider-Ham! <laughs> oh, man. Spider-Ham, Spider-Ham. Friendly neighbourhood Spider-Ham. Spins a web, that's the jig. Kinda wicker, kinda wicker. He's a pig, look out. Here comes the Spider-Ham. Life is a plate of bacon. When trouble's in the making, you'll find the Spider-Ham. What a pig. I'm right here. And then, next to the Leap of Faith scene, my, another one of my favourite scenes from the film. What are you, some kind of silly cartoon? You got a problem with cartoons? And then he just goes to town on Scorpion, uh, with the help of uh, uh, Spider-Man Noir, played brilliantly by Nicolas Cage, might I add, and uh, Penny Parker. Oh, did that feel like a cartoon? <laughs> Oh, I love this film. Great introduction of Miles Morales. And uh, the, the underground bunker they have, you can see all the suits from various Spider-Man timelines, including the PS4 Spider-Man suit from the game. Oh, man, what an incredible film. And it's no surprise that it won. It's no surprise that it managed to win Best Animated Film at uh, at the Oscars. And it's easy to see why. Number four, 2013. Oh my goodness me. Now, not much from this year to really of note but we've had a few award winners like gravity and 12 years a slave the climax of the cornetto trilogy with the world's end you had star trek into darkness marvel with their uh, iron man 3 and thor the dark world uh dc had man of steel disney monsters university but my pick for 2013 film of the year rush now, those who know me well know how much, uh, knows how big a Formula One fan I am. And this is a great dramatization of the rivalry between James Hunt and Nicky Lauda during the 1976 Formula One TV. They even start the rivalry beforehand in their, back in their Formula Three days. The way they recreated Nicky Lauda's crash it's, it is a harrowing sight to see, but it was so realistic, and if I mean, it, it's one I'd highly recommend, even for a non-Formula 1 fan, because this got a lot 
of media attention. It went all the way to the climax of the season with the Japanese Grand Prix, only separated by a handful of points. And the music, hallelujah, Hans Zimmer at it again. I love Hans Zimmer's music. And this is one of my favorite soundtracks. Number three, we move into 2011. And we had the climax to the Harry Potter saga with the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Ryan Gosling in Drive. We had Hugo as well. The Adventures of Tintin. X-Men First Class. The start of the um, uh, James McAvoy Professor X timeline. We had... a. Uh, we had a Pirates of the Caribbean film on Stranger Tides. We had Bridesmaids. Uh, we had the start of the um, reboot trilogy for The Planet of the Apes, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, we had the first Thor film as well, The Hang Hangover Part 2. Um, we had Warrior as well, another great sports film. We had Scream 4, the last film to be directed by... Uh, Wes Craven before he passed away. We had the Fast and Furious as well with Fast and Furious 5. Rango, another great animated film. We had the Thing prequel. But my pick for 2011 film of the year, Real Steel. Whew. This was a perfect balance between the action and the drama of Hugh Jackman's Charlie Kenton bonding with his son Max, played by Dakota Goyo. And it is. It's Rocky with robots. That's the simplest way I can describe it. Danny Elfman helming the soundtrack. And it was brilliant. But mind you, come to, come to think of it, now that I've now that I've been going through all these films, I now want to go I want to go through and watch all these films again now. <laughs> oh, the joys. Ah, oh, the joys of putting together these lists. You, you find these films you've never you've never seen for a while, you've not seen for a while, and you're just like, yeah, I want to see this film now. I want to see, I want to go and watch this film again now. <laughs> Number two, and we are heading right back to the Start of the decade with 2010. Now, what another award-winning year here. We had Leonardo DiCaprio in, Shut in Shutter Island. We had the start of the How to Train Your Dragon trilogy. We had the Social Network. We had Black Swan. We had Inception. We had the King's Speech. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. 127 Hours. The remake of True Grit. Disney with Tangled. Uh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, the climax of the Shrek franchise with Shrek Forever After, Iron Man 2, Tron Legacy, uh, but my film of the year, and a lot for, and for a lot of people as well, Toy Story 3. Seeing it for the first time, I was in the cinema and I was an emotional mess at the end. I was 17 when the film came out and grown men were reportedly crying as well. So I wasn't alone on that one. Because this was a this was a great climax to the trilogy. What an incredible film. It is. And it's like I said, what, what can be said about it that hasn't already been said? One of the few animated films to be nominated for Best Picture, and it's easy to see why. It won Best Animated Film, which is not really that big a surprise. But yeah. And then we ended up with Toy Story 4 nine years later. A film that nobody wanted, but everyone enjoyed regardless. So I'm not so no honorable mentions because I've already gone through a lot of those 
I went I went through a lot of the films that came out in the various years. So I'm just going to go straight into the recap before we get into the number one. Number 10, Skyfall. Number 9, Finding Dory. Number 8, The Lego Movie. Number 7, Avengers Endgame. Number 6, The Greatest Showman. Number 5, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Number 4, Rush. Number 3, Real Steel. And number 2, Toy Story 3. So what could possibly be at number one? Well, if you've been keeping track of the years, 2015 is the only year we're missing. So let's head there and see what came out. And there was a lot to like about 2015. We had the start of the sequel trilogy for Star Wars with The Force Awakens. Marvel continuing to hit their stride with Avengers Age of Ultron and Ant-Man. Uh, we had Mad Max Fury Road. Very rare for an action film to be in the running for, uh, for Oscars. And it actually walked away with a few Oscars as well. Spectre read the latest James Bond film. And we've got uh, J Daniel Craig's last outing coming out in just a few months. Mission Impossible once again, there was Rogue Nation, Bridge of Spies with Tom Hanks, uh, and we had uh, Fast and Furious 7, the last film that had uh, Paul Walker in it, uh, the climax of The Hunger Games with Mockingjay Part 2, Creed, the start of the Rocky spin-offs, um... But my film of the year, and more importantly, film of the decade, from 2015, Inside Out. Now, I watched the film just a few days ago. And... It is an emotional roller coaster, unlike anything that has been come before or since. What happens when you travel inside the head of a young 11-year-old girl? That's where you find the emotions. Joy, sadness, fear, anger, and disgust. This film came out at a time when I really needed something to help to help me cope emotionally. It is the most relatable film I have ever seen. And it's not one that's likely to be topped anytime soon. Looking deeper into it, it's a film that talks about mental health issues. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? So, next up, I'm going to be putting together my top 10 games of the decade. But, yeah, that is it for this top 10. What was your favourite movie of the decade? Was it a Disney film? Was it a Marvel film? Was it a, was it a biopic? Was it something else entirely? You can let me know in the comments. But until then, hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be a dream chaser like myself, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom and make sure that notification bell goes boom. Did somebody say boom? And on that note, that's all, folks. Good night, everybody.